talk about increasing your email openings. Getting your emails to get opened is a fun game and we want to make sure we are playing the top of the game to be able to make that happen. The more that you get your emails to be opened, you've got a much greater chance of more people buying products from you. So let's go through them to figure out, nail it down, how we can get those emails opened in other people's inboxes. Number one is your subject line. If you have a lame subject line, it's not gonna get open. And I did the work for you. <laughs> I've sent out plenty of lame subject lines and I will show you what they are in just a second. But I wanted to show you some of the top subject lines that have ever been opened. So Warby Parker is a sunglass um, or a, a glass eyeglass company. And their number one subject line is, uh-oh, your prescription is expiring. If you guys got that subject line, wouldn't you be like, oh shoot, what, which prescription? What, what am I missing out on, right? You'd wanna click it, you'd wanna find out what was going on. Uh, Manicube, don't open this email. <laughs> I think that is like the best subject line ever. <laughs> of course you wanna open it, right? It tells you not to, so what do we do? We do the opposite, right? Uncommon goods, did you see the as you wish? Did you, do you remember my example on the pillowcase one, how it got opened? A, such a big open rate, you guys look, I use the same subject line as you wish. And it worked. It absolutely worked. 51% uh, open rate. Like that's an ice cream celebration right there. DocuSign had one that said, what are your customers saying? Um, yeah, what are they saying, right? We all want to know what people are saying about us. And then of course, Buzzfeed always has clever ones. Not cool guys. <laughs> I would like to see what that email contained, but I think it'd be a pretty cool email to open up and read. My favorite email title inspiration for e-commerce is Etsy. Get on Etsy's email list just so you can see their subject lines. They are very clever around holidays, around special events. They do a fantastic job. So if you need inspiration for e-commerce selling your products online, mm. I highly recommend getting on emails or Etsy's email list. Oh wait, types of subjects that get opened or clicked on more. Anything that's funny or punny, anything that's shocking, single words, lists, uh, using their name, emojis or exclamation type marks and scarcity tactics. Those are very, very key in uh, getting people to pay attention to your email. Like look, I, here's a little screenshot of one just right out of my inbox. You can see the Amazon local M3. That one is so tiny compared to everyone else's that it caught my eye, right? You want to be able to catch people's eyes. When there was a, a string of time in Pick Your Plum where we put emojis in every email and our, our click or our open rates increased. Like it was crazy magical how an emoji works. <laughs> um, shocking, right? Everybody likes to hear about drama, I swear. <laughs> so anything shocking that you can add is a great way, is a great idea to put in your email titles. Now, I'm going to link down below this video to give you a gajillion headlines for every month. There's so many in here. You can go to March and be like, what are some great headlines? And you can pull them out of there or January and pull those out of there. So I'm not just gonna leave you empty handed. I have created a ton. I believe there's over 400 ideas of types of email titles that you can use uh, to help get your emails to open up a little bit more. Like I said, that's just down below and it's divided into months, into seasons because having something relatable helps to increase those openings too. So it'll just be down below in this video. All right, you ready for me to show you what I totally bombed on and what we totally did good on? <laughs> okay, the first two right here, number one is how to have the first or the worst day ever. It's one we did with How Does She and that one rocked rocked, rocked. We got so many people to open up that email uh, because people were like, what? How to have the worst day ever? I don't want that. How do I not have the worst day ever? So they opened it. Next one was our favorite Black Friday deals. Remember this was a scarcity? The first one was kind of like the drama. The next one was the scarcity. Those got really good open rates. Now look at these 
to right here. This one right here, the old lady who ate a fly and other handcrafted soft toys. This one was from Pick Your Plum, and I think this one was a total 100% bomb. There's no curiosity, there's no excitement, there's no scarcity, it's just boring and lame. And look at the other one, Under Armour and GoPro. And what's your point? That doesn't even give you a percentage off. At least Pick Your Plum gave you a percentage off, right? So I have tested some good ones and some bad ones. This one actually came in from Zulily. So I'll take credit for this lame one, but Zulily gets to take credit for that lame one. <laughs> but Zulily redeemed itself later that day with an email that said, Allison, or you've earned it, comma, Allison. And that grabbed my attention because if you guys know anything about Zulily, they have a referral and I earned, I think it was like $15. And I was like, yeah. So I watched for that email. So make your emails exciting. Make them like create curiosity. That's what you want to get people to do is to open up those emails. And your email title is what is gonna make it happen. All right, so let's go through. I wanna talk about more ways to help you to get those emails to get opened. Uh, and we're gonna go through this awesome list of ideas real quick. Number one, you're gonna educate your emails or integrate your emails with education. About a 90-10 split. Now when I say that, you're not like, all right, see class, we're going to be talking about the benefits of a wood pencil versus a mechanical pencil. No, no. When I talk about educating in your emails, you're showing them how to use your product. So for instance, if you have, if you're doing fashion, if you do a picture of just a plain shirt on a hanger, you're not educating, you're selling. But if you pair it with a cute pair of pants and jeans and earrings, you're educating your customers to let them know what is coming up, what's the leading fashion, and what they should be looking with, and how they can pair it with the right clothing. That is education. We educate through our pictures. We educate through the story that we're telling. So for instance, this tray right here, this three-tiered tray, you guys have seen me sell this. I educate by, look what you can do with it. You just don't have to put papers on it and let it collect dust, right? I'm like, nectarines on the top, or what are those? Cuties, nectarines, whatever they are. No, they're not nectarines, oh my goodness. Cutie, we'll go with that one. And then mugs in the middle, and then look at that cute orange pop on the bottom. That's how people can use it. And people are like, oh, that would be so fun. Maybe a hot chocolate party, maybe a tea party. And I'm giving them ideas because I've educated them on how to use my product. Up here, this is where we were selling twine. What can people do with twine? Some people don't know. And so I showed them what they could do with twine. Just wrap little cute muffins up and then go deliver them to a neighbor or a bake sale or whatever you want to. I'm educating what this stuff is with my picture. Over here, this was another recent item that we sold. Instead of me just putting the uh, boards up against a corner and taking a picture, we integrated a story into it. How can people use this and tell a story? So we educated our customers to let them know that's a great product to use for back to school. They sold out very, very quickly. All right, next thing, write to a person. I cannot tell you how many emails I get every day that are so over salesy, so overdone, so over formatted that they just go straight to spam. Like blah, 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 right? I don't want them. I don't want spammy emails. I want to know when I open an email that it is coming from someone with a heart, someone that cares. So when you are writing your email, just let your personality shine through. And if you're like, well, I don't have a personality, or <laughs> like I've used that excuse before, or I can't write, I've used that excuse before, let your pictures tell your story. Let your the design of your product tell the story. You just don't make it so over formatted. Just make it like it's coming from a friend. Number three, send it the right time. Now this one, you're gonna have to play around with a little bit. And I have found how does she is best at night. Pick your plums best in the morning, pillows best in the afternoon, because afternoon is when a lot of moms are looking and I want them to buy pillowcases, right? Uh, how does she, when people are looking for food, dinner ideas, crafting ideas, that's when how does she posts. And then pick your plum in the morning, 
we did it right before everybody left for work or left for school or before the kids were up. Like, that's why we posted it early. And so you'll play around with this a little bit to find out when the right time is. And it's okay if you're like sending it at seven, you're like, you know what, let's send it at eight or let's send it at nine and see if we get it a bigger open rate, do it. It's okay to test, it's okay to change things. And then I have found that Tuesday through Thursday, uh, the best time to send emails. Monday people are too busy, Friday people have the weekend on the mind, weekend people are in the weekend, right? And then like I said, Monday they need to catch back up. So Tuesday through Thursday has always been the best time to send an email in all of my businesses. And then also look at who you're selling to, moms, dads, or teens. Uh, if you're selling to moms, you know, probably at nine or eight o'clock, seven, eight o'clock in the morning when kids are getting up, breakfast, getting them out the door is probably not the best time, right? Uh, dads, if you're sending it to them, um, oh, I don't know whenever dads are busy, right? Or teens, when they're at school. Don't send a teen an email at 10 in the morning. They're in school, they won't get it, right? So think about your audience and when the best time would be to send an email for them. Okay, number four, scrub your list. It is better to have 10 people with 100% open rate than 1,000 people with 10% open rate. You'll save money and you'll have a more powerful like a crazy powerful list and that's what you're wanting. So if you're like, how do I scrub my list? Go into MailChimp and just go into the question and answers and it will tell you, would you like to get rid of all the emails that haven't opened within the last six months? Uh, yes. Okay, if you're in SendGrid, same thing. Scrub your list, get rid of those emails that were fake, were never even real in the first place that you were paying for. You can get rid of those right off the bat. It will save you money and it will make your list so much more powerful. Okay, here's an advanced tip. This tip is pretty darn magical. If you're just starting, flag this and come back to it. Uh, and if you're already going, I want you guys to implement this because this is pretty powerful. The number one email that gets opened without doubt the most are thank you for your order emails. So someone comes through, buys something from you, and then they get an email that says, hey, thanks so much for your order, here's your tracking number. Um, if you have any questions, email, blah, 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 right? If you put something in that thank you email that says, look for tomorrow's email, because I want to send you a surprise. You guys, they're opening up that email, and if you let them know to look for the email tomorrow that you're sending them, because there's gonna be a surprise in it, they're gonna get so excited. And then it's gonna train your customers to open up their emails, which yes, I'll take that. So you train them to open up their emails. And then the next day you send them an email and you say, hey, I noticed that, um, or I'm so excited that you just bought these cupcake liners. They're coming to you, you're going to love them. Then offer them something else. So maybe you say, you know, because you bought these cupcake liners, I wanna offer you some sprinkles where you can get a thing of sprinkles for free and you just pay shipping, $6.99 in shipping, or if you buy two things of sprinkles, then I it'll be free shipping and it's only $9.99. And so you're giving them a bonus, right? It's a free plus shipping offer, or you say, you know what, why don't you buy a couple more and then I'll just pay for shipping. Well, guess what you do with those products? You put those products into the original order and then you ship it out for them. So you are increasing your margins, you are getting another order in, you're training your customers to open up your emails from you, and you just have a big fat smile on your face because it's pretty awesome. And you can do it again and again and again. Like have this big long chain and you can keep doing it until they quit ordering from you. And who knows, maybe they're gonna order from you for three weeks straight, right? Just keep sending them emails and keep that loop open for them to keep buying your amazing products that they need to have in their hands. All right, that's a pretty fun thought. All right, those are your tips to increase your opening. Remember, go back through one at a time, knock them out, and make this happen.